The thunderstorm machine is going to be kicking up gear once again across the Great Lakes region. In this video, I'm going to talk about how many storms we will see, when we'll see those storms, and how strong they could possibly be. Hello everybody, the time is 7.09 p.m. and it is, well, 7.09, July 9th. So, welcome to another bit from Great Lakes weather. Hopefully everybody is doing well today. Uh, we could see a few thunderstorms across the Great Lakes region, and that is saying just a little bit because it looks like we could see a thunderstorm chances across the Great Lakes region every day for at least the remainder of this week after Monday. So, well, actually Monday, the Upper Peninsula will likely see some severe thunderstorms as well. We're going to talk about that potential threat associated with this. Likely could see all severe hazards from multiple events over the next couple of days. Um, and it's going to be something we want to watch carefully to see exactly how the model is going to be de depict it. Again, there's still some variables at play, as always, with the weather models. But we're just going to break down the weather models here and give you an idea of exactly what we might expect in terms of potential for severe weather. So let's dive right in, get started. First of all, you have the SBC's outlook that's just recently updated earlier this afternoon. And you do see that now parts of the Upper Peninsula are under a slight risk for severe thunderstorms. What do, are those threats? Well, there's a tornado threat, a wind threat, and a hail threat. All severe hazards will be possible, but the focus of the severe weather threat is going to be for tornadoes and hail. Hail. It looks like hail looks to be the primary threat, and then there is a chance for a brief isolated tornado across parts of the Upper Peninsula, which, again, um, not as common up there because, again, you have rugged terrain and woods up in that region, But it, so keeping that in mind. But still, that looks to be the potential setup, and it has a lot to do with a mid-level jet that's going to be moving into that region connected with a front that is going to be pushing across the Great Lakes region over the next several days. And it looks like we'll see multiple rounds of thunderstorms over the next several days as a series of systems pushes through across the United States. Now, what is the pattern that is contributing to this? Well, let's look at the 500 millibar height anomaly on the GFS. Again, what we're looking at here with the 500 millibar height anomaly is we are, well, pretty much the pressure differences in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Um, anywhere that you see um, blue is low pressure aloft. So that low pressure aloft means that there's higher pressure at the ground level and it's sinking air. Now, the red indicates areas of higher pressure aloft. Okay, so the air is rising off the ground. Low pressure is being created at the surface. So that is what you're seeing with the 500 millibar height anomaly. And this pattern, again, is something I mentioned in a previous forecast discussion. In the southwestern portion, you have higher pressure. In the northeastern portion of the United States, you have lower pressure. So what? It, why is that important? Well, what you see here is, first off, you have this area of ridging here, which is going to be contributing to more heat across this region, Arizona, New Mexico, the southwestern portion of the United States. And then you also have this troughing or troughing in the eastern portion of the United States. Now, why is that important? Well, there will be instances throughout next week where we'll likely see a push of higher pressure or ridging into parts of the Great Lakes region. It's slight, it's subtle, but it's there. Okay, And what you notice is you have a series of ridges and troughs that are going to be kind of battling in this region here. This is a setup for the potential to see quite a few rounds of thunderstorms over the next week, maybe even into next week. And I'm going to show you how the models depict that in just a little bit. But you can see that there is a pattern, there's pretty significant pattern change here. You got that southwestern ridging that is occurring, and then you've got your battle zone for stronger thunderstorms. And you can kind of see that that battle zone changes throughout multiple days of the week. So Michigan, Indiana, Ohio have chances of thunderstorms next week. We're talking about when and where and how severe. And I will say the most likely day for me to chase this week is going to be Wednesday um, if the models don't change. But it does appear that there is going to be some decent potential across parts of lower Michigan on Sunday. Again, that's subject to change, but it's looking possible that there could be some storms then. One other thing I want to point out is that as this continues, you have your trowing in the eastern side. And then it also goes into parts of the plains later on in the week. But I am noticing this pretty deep trough that the models are depicting in the longer range. We're going to want to watch this carefully because there will likely be a push of, um, there will be a push of mid-level and upper-level winds uh, with associated with this trough that could lead to some stronger storms. And we'll just have to keep an eye on that as it continues to move 
in this direction. But again, this is just the computer model depiction, one computer model depiction, the GFS. So it's likely going to change in the upcoming days. But what does that mean for our hazards in terms of severe weather? Look at this here. This is the 700 millibar height, okay, and it's showing the winds at this level. Now, as we see an increase in mid-level winds and upper-level winds, we also see the increase in chances for higher directional and speed shear that will contribute, that's a main contributor to stronger thunderstorms that are capable of producing more severe hazards such as damaging winds and tornadoes. Now, hail also could be included with that as well, but that increase in winds will be present if we start back at the beginning in the Upper Peninsula tomorrow. Now, notice here, Upper Peninsula, Monday afternoon, you've got a pretty strong mid-level jet that is surging through the Upper Peninsula and parts of northern Wisconsin, okay? So these regions along the Lake Superior shoreline, Apostle Islands, these regions, and then getting down towards central Wisconsin, you might want to just be mindful of the fact that there could be some severe thunderstorms in your area tomorrow afternoon, okay? So that's the expectation, um, something that's put out by the SPC, and it'll be something that we have to pay attention to in the, up, in the next 24 hours or so. But that is going to continue to push off to the east. And one thing that the models are depicting is that th those mid-level winds will continue into parts of southern lower Michigan on Tuesday. Now, these storms that come on Tuesday will likely be more isolated. But if they do tend to form in this general region, it's likely I'll probably be out chasing these storms um, later on in the afternoon if I don't miss them during the day. So those will be more isolated and continuing into Wednesday, you do notice that there are also some additional um, models hinting at some mid-level winds. I want to take a look at the upper-level winds for this one too, but there is some changes with how these models are depicting them. But you do notice the upper-level winds still are a little bit, a little elevated. They're not very strong, but they are elevated across much of the Great Lakes region in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And then you also have these pushes of stronger winds that move through connected with these with these different um, events that we will see. So here is the precip type. We'll kind of get a better look at this. But you can see kind of the setup we're having. We're dealing with um, more directional and speed shear than we have had in the past couple of weeks. And that is what's going to contribute to an increase in severe weather activity. So as we go into Wednesday, Wednesday, you see that the models are depicting, oh, a few showers and thunderstorms moving into parts of Michigan and Indiana get a sounding of that and one thing I'm noticing is that although this model is not depicted super well I'm seeing an increase in thunderstorm coverage and what I do see is this low level wind shear that is going to be present with this setup. Now the GFS is depicting it a lot different than other models are with in, in terms of a severe weather threat and it's actually pushing it down farther towards Illinois and Missouri the more severe weather potential. But we'll have to see how it plays out, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it shift farther to the north. There's actually some models. The NAM is depicting a more northward trend as well. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But progressing it farther forward, you do notice that there's a series of just um, random events of pop-up showers, maybe a few thunderstorms in there as well. Looks like some in southeastern Michigan on Thursday. And you do see that that sounding does depict severe weather potential. This looks like it could be more along the lines of a um, damaging wind or hail event connected with these. But you do notice still those mid-level winds are strong associated with this, and the upper-level winds are strong as well. Now, the surface-level winds will be rather low connected with that, so I, wouldn't, I don't think those low-level winds will help with the storm's further initiation. And then as we get into the weekend, we do see, um, as we get into the longer range, more potential for severe thunderstorms. You're noticing that with the connection of these new um, these stronger mid-level winds, stronger upper-level winds, and the increase in directional and speed shear, we're going to get an increase in thunderstorm activity along with that. So that's kind of what is being shown right now for this week, and we see multiple low-pressure systems. Now, the one that is coming on Monday, the models are depicting as pretty strong. That's going to be one we're going to watch carefully for the potential for some stronger thunderstorms, and that's one I'm going to want to watch as it approaches. So um, let's look at the Euro model and what it's depicting for the next couple of days as we get into, again, here's Monday. 
you notice that those thunderstorms do pop up right over the Upper Peninsula, parts of northern Wisconsin as well, packing marginal tornado potential. Cape values of 1600. You do have some storm relative felicity, low cloud bases, lots of speed shear. Don't see, don't see a great amount of directional shear, but there is a decent speed shear present with these storms. And then as you continue down to the south, the southeast on Tuesday. At about 1 p.m., you do notice that these storms do pop up some more across parts of lower Michigan. Now, lower Michigan could see some marginally severe thunderstorms with these. Looks like they're going to be more elevated according to what these models are depicting on the Euro. But as you get closer to parts of eastern Michigan, such as Lansing, still showing kind of a similar setup. Lots of speed shear present with that, but not as much in terms of a tornado threat appears with these storms. But again... Anything is possible if you've got anything's possible, so it's definitely just good to be aware. But as we get into Wednesday, we're watching this next system that's going to be moving into the area, um, bringing some thunderstorm development. And it looks like the Euro is depicting that those storms will stay farther to the south a little more as well as we get into Wednesday afternoon near Indianapolis region. Still don't see too much in terms of wind shear present down in that region. If you go up into Michigan, the winds are actually going to be pretty stable across the surface, but there's mid-level and upper-level winds are still going to be rather elevated. But these models are depicting it a bit differently than what they were in Greece as of recently. So it does look a little different than before. But again, you do notice that there's a little cluster of storms that does develop across Illinois that is packing tornado potential according to what the models are depicting with higher storm relative velocity, lots of directional and speed shear. Now, question is there's still a lot of variables at play there's going to be a lot that's going to be changing but we are seeing instances where there's going to be isolated severe weather setups across much of the great lakes region over the next several days isolated showers and thunderstorms and it's going to be hard to accurately pick where these storms will land over the next couple of days but as we get into thursday thursday morning it looks like it's going to be a little bit messy on thursday morning but then we have the pop-up thunderstorms once again in on Thursday afternoon getting into Friday and that is showing again severe setup according to what the Euro model is depicting so a lot of variables to play with this event that's coming up okay so there's still gonna be a lot to figure out um, several days of thunderstorm activity not sure about the severe levels again the SPC is probably gonna have a lot more information about that coming up but this is just a Fair warning that something appears to be happening next week with a, in terms of a few rounds of severe thunderstorms. So, and then Tuesday of next week, models are pointing to some pretty pretty strong storms associated with a low pressure that system that will be moving through. So, a lot on the table here. Again, here's that mi the mid-level winds being as being depicted by the Euro models. Again, similar setup. Your mid-level winds surge down into Lower Michigan on Tuesday for that isolated severe weather threat. And then, again, it kind of gets a little bit spotty and messy as we get into later on next week. And then the models are depicting that strong low moving in Tuesday afternoon into Wednesday. And you do see those strong mid-level winds connected to that coming in as well. So a lot of questions still about this setup. But again, good to be aware of what could potentially happen. You will see that instability um, according to the Euro, it does not look very good until you get into Tuesday afternoon across lower Michigan. You have that instability, maybe enough to fire a few thunderstorms. Again, some of those could be strong, but they will be isolated. And then as we get into Wednesday and Thursday, you notice that the instability really ramps up across Indiana, Ohio, and southern Michigan. Could see a few strong thunderstorms connected with that, as well as the um, increase in upper-level winds associated with the changes that are occurring across parts of the atmosphere at that time. So there's a lot in place for at least pop-up thunderstorms and will be variable, could be severe. So just some things to keep in mind as well. Let's focus more on the upcoming threats over the next few days. So what we have here is the HRRR model showing what exactly could happen on Monday. Okay, so this is Monday morning, getting into Monday afternoon. HRRR depicting it a little different, going to be going to be very small cells popping up across parts of the Great Lakes region, but again, should, 
showing severe potential directional shear, speed shear, elevated cloud base according to what this model is showing, but very strong directional and speed shear looking pro probable in the Upper Peninsula, probably areas near um, Munising, around Pictured Rocks region. You're going to want to be watching the weather forecast as these storms go through. And then this is at about 11 p.m. that evening. You can see that the storms kind of move through, begin to die out by 7 a.m. And then the expectation is that more storms will form in parts of central Michigan next. So NAM model, uh, again, kind of depicting that Wednesday threat for, okay, so there's that Monday hazard. Um, you look at a sounding ahead of those storms. You do have that severe weather potential that is showing up on the models there. And then as we get into Tuesday afternoon, you will notice that some storms may initiate across parts of Michigan. Again, the NAM depicts it as smaller rain showers, but again, marginal sphere potential, elevated cloud bases, uh, good direct, good speed shear with these storms. So we'll have to see how that pans out. But as we get to Wednesday, again, here's that system that I was um, talking more about on Wednesday that I might chase. It looks like, again, a northward and southern mode could be possible with these storms according to the NAM models, packing marginal sphere potential. You do have a lot of directional shear associated with these storms. So definitely still going to want to watch this for a potential severe weather setup on Wednesday across Michigan and parts of Indiana and then also going into Illinois. These storms will make it into Indiana later on during the evening. This is depicted at 7 p.m. here showing that severe weather setup. Again, this is southern Michigan here, not showing that hazard type, but still there are still good ingredients in place for stronger storms. Now, right ahead of this main line, you do see that there is a rather elevated um, tornado potential with those storms as they move towards southern Indiana. That's going to be something to watch out for if you're in that particular region. So that is what's being shown in the NAM. All right, and then here's the high definition NAM 3K. It's showing a bit more of a different scenario with convective line developing in parts of central Wisconsin and also in the Upper Peninsula. And you get a sounding. You do see that severe weather potential associated with that. And then as it progresses forward, you see a few isolated cells popping up Tuesday afternoon. Get a sounding around those cells. You don't really see a great setup for severe weather associated with those cells. But some cells could pick up intensity and become severe and maybe pack some damaging winds and hail. But again, the storm relative felicity is not going to be as strong as what they're going to be getting up in the Upper Peninsula tomorrow. So again, and then showing a few more clusters of storms overnight in parts of Ohio into Wednesday. And that's as far as we've got in terms of the high definition models. But again, just keep in mind, next several days, just going to want to um, keep checking the SPC's website for more information about these storms because looks like we could have a couple rounds of severe thunderstorms over the next couple of days. So um, I'll continue to provide updates as needed. Hopefully this information was helpful to you. I will likely be chasing maybe two or three days this week if I can get the time to do so. Just stay safe, stay aware, keep checking your weather forecast office information, and thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.